This Russell Wilson situation has really gone from, in my opinion, something that I thought would probably not happen at all to something that seems like is more likely to happen than not. What started as a very innocent request for an offensive line and a hope for him to be more involved in personnel decisions resulted in whether the Seattle Seahawks truly view him as a good quarterback at all whatsoever. There's schematic issues. There's the fact that Russell Wilson wants a better offensive line. There's so much to dig deep in here. And at the end of the day, at the end of each and every video I've made, including the video we made citing the athletic source a few days ago, all the way to this video currently, originally, I felt like it was extremely unlikely that the Seattle Seahawks will trade Russell Wilson. After all, he is probably the best quarterback they've had in the entire franchise's history. That's not a bold claim. But what I posted this poll onto Twitter asking, do you now believe that Russell Wilson is about to be traded? Most of you guys said yes. And to be honest, after all the reports that are coming out in regards to this, I don't blame you. So before we get to the content, do me a favor and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Consider subscribing and turning on our notifications to help this channel grow. Also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter because that's the best way for you to get featured on our content. Like my man Gaming Bust over here. Say hi, Gaming Bust. A huge shout out to our latest Mike Mafia soldier. We do these shout outs in the beginning of the video so everyone can see that you've joined. Shout out to Jonathan Sanders. And now that we got all that out of the way, break! Mic check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? A week ago, I made probably my best video on this entire Russell Wilson situation. I went in, I read this long 20 minute piece article from The Athletic. I actually paid the expensive $4.99 subscription. So I was able to dig down deep and figure out what is truly going on inside the Seattle Seahawks front office. How could a person like John Schneider and Pete Carroll, who have been very stable over the past decade, who have brought the Seattle Seattle Seahawks to brand new unprecedented heights allow Russell Wilson to go in front of the media and tell them how unhappy he truly is. Let's start with a brief summary about how all of this happened. Russell Wilson essentially goes on the Dan Patrick show and Dan Patrick pulls a nice little finesse move over here. He asked Russell Wilson whether or not he would like to be more of a part of personnel decisions. And of course, Russell Wilson being Russell Wilson said, yes, of course I want to be more involved in personnel decisions. That's something that I should be involved in because, well, I'm the franchise quarterback. I'm the face of their franchise. And therefore, at the end of the day, it's my legacy, it's my team's legacy, and it helps to be more involved. So that dialogue should happen more often. Subsequently, Jason LaConfora came out and said, I'm hearing Russell Wilson's camp has grown increasingly frustrated by the Seahawks' inability to protect the eight-time Pro Bowler. He has been sacked 394 times in nine seasons, and this situation warrants serious monitoring. Now, if you've been following along with this Russell Wilson story and saga, you'd see that I cite this month-old tweet a lot in these news videos. And that's mainly because the first time I read this, I'm like, bro, give me a break. The Seahawks are not trading Russell Wilson. Like that's bizarre. That's absurd. Any NFL fan knows that there's no way the Seahawks would trade Russell Wilson. I don't believe it. My subscribers don't believe it. Look at some of the comments you guys gave me. And I don't blame you as an NFL fan. I thought this was berserk. But then immediately after, these are still month old news bits. Will the Seattle Seahawks trade Russell Wilson? A couple of teams have called Seattle to inquire about Wilson's availability, but there's no chance the Seahawks are dealing their star QB. Man, just pay attention to this news bit because we're going to come back to it because things have really changed over the past month. Now, as time progresses forward, February 11th, Seahawks management is not happy with Russell Wilson. Of course they're not because he went on the Dan Patrick show and said he's frustrated by getting hit too much. Take your sacks like a man and trend towards early retirement and keep your mouth shut. Don't go out and speak your truth and tell the entire world that you're concerned that Aaron Donald, Nick Bosa, and JJ Watt that was newly acquired 
and Chandler Jones are all going to be coming and chasing you without having any O-line whatsoever. Don't go and voice your frustrations and your concerns at all whatsoever. Now, Dan Patrick came out and said about a month ago that Seahawks management is not happy with Russell Wilson and his camp for taking this to the media. You wonder if they're going to be able to coexist. The current situation is not sustainable. That's what I am told. Now, at the time, I told you guys, guys, Russell Wilson's just trying to finesse a better offensive line for himself, I don't think he's actually going to get traded. Then, as time progressed forward, Michael Silver came out with a report that shocked me, saying that, essentially, if any team wanted Russell Wilson, they'd have to at least offer three first-round draft picks. And that's when things started heating up. Now, the Athletic article was very long, so I'm just going to cite the video you should watch if you want to get the gist of it, but I'm going to give you some highlight points of it. Essentially, there were huge personnel differences between Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. You see, during a very important home game against the Arizona Cardinals, Russell Wilson met with the Seattle Seahawks coaching staff, and it was a very tense meeting because Russell Wilson turned the ball over seven times in his previous two games, and the Seattle Seahawks lost both games to the Bills and the Rams. And Russell Wilson essentially wanted to say, yo, guys, let me continue cooking. I'm going to get us where we need to go. But Pete Carroll doesn't necessarily like that philosophy because Pete Carroll has built his Hall of Fame credentials on what he sees as the safest way to play football, which is running the football, avoiding turnovers, and exploding in the passing game, not necessarily depending on the passing game first. Bear in mind, in the earlier part of the season this year, Russell Wilson put together one of the best statistical stretches of his career and emerged as a clear MVP frontrunner. And after winning a Super Bowl, one out of two Super Bowls that he's been able to make it to, he currently covets individual statistics and awards a little bit more because of the implications it'll have on his legacy. So the ultimate middle finger to Russell Wilson was when the Seattle Seahawks decided to part ways with Brian Schottenheimer, the man that essentially allowed Russell Wilson to cook, citing philosophical differences as the reason why? What more evidence do you need? The Seattle Seahawks want to be a run-heavy team, and Russell Wilson wants to be pass-heavy. That makes a lot of sense. This all boils down to the Super Bowl this year, which was apparently what really triggered Russell Wilson. He flew to Tampa Bay to pick up his Walter Payton Man of the Year award. He and his wife Sierra watched the game in a suite next to Roger Goodell, and as Tom Brady was playing against Patrick Mahomes, Russell Wilson was frustrated. He texted his private quarterback coach to vent about watching the game instead of playing it. And also bear in mind, if you're watching the game, there's nothing that clearly indicates the import of a good Good offensive line than this year's Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes went up against the top pass rushing defense in the NFL, and he had three of his offensive linemen out due to injury. Meanwhile, Tom Brady seemingly didn't even get scratched in the pocket and had the best opportunity to make all of his throws, despite being a 43-year-old quarterback. If you're a QB and you're watching Tom Brady, you're probably extremely jealous of his situation. He has all of the weapons he wants around him. He has a great offensive line. On top of that, he has a remarkable defense. Russell Wilson then went to the Seattle Seahawks and said, look, this is an issue that's bothering me. I want to know what direction you guys are going. Pete Carroll then said, Russ, pretty much don't worry. We have this under control. That's when Russell Wilson went on the Dan Patrick show and took things public. Now, this article gets a little bit more wild because this kind of shows you the lack of faith the Seattle Seahawks really had in Russell Wilson. When Patrick Mahomes was coming out of the draft, the Seattle Seahawks were interested in drafting him if he fell all the way to their laps. Ultimately, they didn't. And in hindsight, yeah, obviously that would have been the right play. We don't know the schematic fit Mahomes would have had in Seattle, but it kind of makes sense. A year later, the Seattle Seahawks also were looking at Josh Allen as well. As a result of this, Russell Wilson's camp broached trade destinations with the Seahawks, and this is according to Mike Duger. The Dolphins, Jets, Saints, and Raiders have been met some people in the NFL think a trade could happen in the near future. Now, he also came out and said he would love to play for the Bears and the Dallas Cowboys, the Bears and the Dallas Cowboys, but we'll have to wait and take a look at that. This brings us all the way to where we are at today, when according to Diana Russini via the Pat McAfee show, 
the Seattle Seahawks have made calls to other teams about trading away quarterback Russell Wilson because Russ is not happy in Seattle. Now compare this to what I told you earlier. Earlier I said that the Seattle Seahawks weren't even answering calls on Russell Wilson. Now they are calling other teams to try to trade Russell Wilson. Now there's more to this, which is even more bizarre because we get an idea what else is brewing in Seattle. You see, the rift between Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks is happening because Wilson believes he's a top five quarterback all time. And he also believes that he isn't currently even viewed as a top 10 QB of all time. He thinks Seattle is holding him back with certain decisions regarding personnel and scheme. And so pretty much Russ is coming out and saying, I have the potential to be one of the greatest quarterbacks in NFL history, which by the way, I agree with him. To say he is and to say he has the potential are two different things. I think in the right situation, Russell Wilson can enter that conversation of top five QB of all time. He's still extremely young in quarterback years, by the way, he's in his early thirties. And so far he's done remarkable things for the Seattle Seahawks franchise. And that can't go unnoticed but he is not even currently close to entering that conversation. And if the Seattle Seahawks want to continue to be run heavy, then he's never going to get to that point. Kleiman continues to say that the issue between the two sides is because now after Carroll gave him full reign of the offense in 2020, Russell Wilson couldn't maintain a high level of success for even one full season. The second half of 2020 was a turnover filled mess. So they no longer trust him to be the focal point of the offense. So now we have a Russell Wilson versus Pete Carroll standoff, but let's not forget Carroll was criticized for years for being too nice to Russell Wilson, so the dynamic has now shifted the other way. Wilson wants to play in an offense that allows him to look like a MVP QB, and his own team doesn't trust him. So essentially, Russell Wilson wants to cook, and the Seahawks said, we let you cook and it didn't work. We should try something else. And Russell Wilson's essentially saying, no, 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 no. It's not the fact that I threw a lot of interceptions. I threw a lot of interceptions because I didn't have an offensive line and I didn't really have a good supporting cast around me. And that's why things didn't work out so well. The Seahawks also kind of had Russell Wilson on a little bit of a short leash. Now, look, I always like to tell you guys this. There's what the media tells you and then there's what the team and the camps are trying to get based off of what the media is telling you. Meaning, originally when Russell Wilson's camp came out and said, hey, he'd be willing to take a trade to another team if the Seahawks didn't put a better offensive line around him and if they didn't let him cook. I don't think their goal was to initially try to get Russell Wilson traded. I feel like it was more to tell the Seattle Seahawks we're very passionate and very serious about these demands that we're making to you guys. And then now that the Seattle Seahawks are coming out and saying, hey, we're now taking trade calls on Russell Wilson, it's gotten to a point where they're saying, hey, Russ, you're either going to play ball with us, you're either going to see things our way a little bit more, you're either going to try to buy into what we're doing, play the best football that it takes for us to succeed, or we're going to trade you. Now. I'm sure many teams would be happy to have Russell Wilson on their roster. I know for a fact that the Carolina Panthers would happily trade the number seven overall pick for him. I know that the New York Jets would probably trade the number two overall pick for him. That's a situation that I think makes a lot of sense for both the New York Jets and the Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks could like go out and draft Zach Wilson or Justin Fields or whoever they want at the number two pick. And the amount of capital they could get in return for Russell Wilson is significant. If you're not loving your quarterback, Quarterback that is owed a tremendous amount of money to, it's probably a good idea to take the dead cap hit for this year and rebuild around a rookie QB that has a rookie scale contract because the Seattle Seahawks haven't had success with Russell Wilson since he was on a rookie scale contract. So now, originally, I thought that there's no way this trade was going to happen. Now I believe there's a very high chance this trade's gonna happen. So let me know in the comment section down below, what team do you think Russell Wilson's about to get traded to? Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.